Court will go uh, front row, uh, second row left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Jerry, first of all, I guess, Hi, uh, Stephen. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Uh, how have you handled this uh, transition of this different role that you are now in, uh, I'll start there from you. Well, I think that's a great question. Uh, I, I would tell you that, um, that obviously this has been the hardest uh, stretch of my professional career, which, which I would tell you means I've had a really good career. Uh, because if this is the hardest stretch, then life's not going to be too bad. I would tell you, Stephen, that uh, we serve a powerful and wonderful God and that my friends and family that have shared with me scriptures like James 1-2 or Philippians 1 or Romans 8 and have continued uh, to lift me up and allow me to be a, uh, to try to be uh, a worthy man and uh, a man of strength, that has been uh, uh, invaluable and I have been blessed. Uh, I've been blessed by people in this profession, you know, the Mike Tomlins and the Mike Vrabels and the Dick LeBeaus of the world that have reached out and had great advice and great uh, insight into uh, this uh, profession and this career. And, and, and so uh, I would tell you that, uh, that uh, the handling of it is, is, uh, is a work in progress. But I would also tell you this, that if I, uh, in my opinion, that handling it in a different fashion, uh, picking up your ball and going home, kicking the can down the road, quitting, packing your, packing your stuff up, being a miserable human being. If I had done those things, that would make me a liar to every one of those young men that I've coached along the way that had tough times, that got replaced on a given Saturday or a Friday night or a Sunday afternoon and uh, had to have the conversation with, hey, hang in there, it's gonna be okay. Whether they agreed with the decision or not, didn't matter. You have to battle and fight through. Those, those players and young men that struggle with the public criticism and the things that are out there in the world today. If you, if you want to look them in the eye and tell them, hey, you, you need to hang in there. You need to only, don't, don't accept criticism from somebody you wouldn't accept advice from. If you're not willing to stand up and do the same thing, then you're a liar to all those people along life's journey. And so uh, that, that I'm blessed to work here. And the other, the last piece is this. We talk about the brotherhood around here an awful lot. We talk about it an awful lot. And if you believe it and you live it, then when things get tough, it's easy to be a brother when it's 66 to 17 on a Saturday afternoon. It's hard to be a brother when you face adversity. It's hard. And so if, if, you, if you're here for the other men on this team, the other coaches and the other players on this team, if that's truly what you believe, then you're here with them come, come uh, heck or high water. You're here fighting and struggling and scrapping. And uh, I love those kids. I, I love those kids in that locker room. I love those kids on this team. I love the men I work with, and I love Ohio State. And I'm, and I'm going to be here. I'm going to be fighting and battling and scratching and clawing for the remainder of this season to help us win every freaking Saturday. That's what I'm going to do. And so whether or not uh, I, I like everything or how everything went, that got, got nothing to do with it. It's got to do with you got a job to do. You look people in the eye and you say this is how. And hopefully someday down the road some young man who had trouble, who, who faces trouble or adversity can remember an example of a man who tried to lead with positive energy in the midst of adversity. And if I can do that, then I will have accomplished my goal as long as we are continuing to progress and win on Saturday afternoons. So thank you for the question. It's a long answer to a short question. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> have you had, the, I guess, have these conversations with recruits about what's going on around here? No, not, not. You know what I talk to recruits about? Playing ball at Ohio State, playing ball in, a, in an unbelievable environment, being a part of something really special, uh, you know, and, and so I, I, I think Recruiting to Ohio State is not nearly as hard as some people would like you to believe. Uh, this is an unbelievable place, and so I've had great opportunity to have great conversations with young people all over the country about it. Right behind him, Dan Holt, 11 Warriors. Hi, Dan. Gary, just what's the you know adjustment been like for you in terms of changing those responsibilities from going from you know calling those plays down on the sideline to now you know watching the game from up in the box? Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, and, and and I did not. This was a a, a ble another blessing. Uh, that comes out of, uh, of tough times. I, I, I had not been in the press box for a long time, and, 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 and when I was, it was my first year at UC, and it was a brief period of time. And I have found to being in the press box to be very valuable. Uh, it, it, it's been something that uh, I think has enhanced my ability to see the game, communicate the game, and, uh, 
and, and I think that that's been a real strength over the last couple of weeks. I miss hugging people. You know, I got Kevin Wilson now, and I gotta be honest with you, it's not the same. <laughs> and, 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 and so, you know, that part, that, that's real. I miss that desperately, being on the sideline, but that's selfish too. And, uh, and, and so, having the opportunity to go up there, and uh, which was my idea, by the way, and be able to see it, uh, and I think really, really see it and get a feel for the game has been, has been really helpful. You, you mentioned, you know, just staying focused and, you know, staying committed to helping this team win every Saturday. How, how do you do that? How do you compartmentalize that and make sure you're not thinking about, okay, what could happen after this season? Uh, I, you know, first of all, I don't have any lack of confidence in my ability to do the job. I, I think that that's important. Uh, I, I feel very comfortable with who I am and how I do my business. And so I get up out of, out of bed every day wor working on that day. You know, and, and try, I'm just trying to win uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Trying to win Tuesday. You know what I mean? And, and so for me, that, that is all that I'm trying to do. And, and when those kids get in here at 2.30, present to them the best options and the best opportunities they have uh, to have success in a bye week and then, and then against Indiana. And that's, you know, to me, that's, that's what you do. That's coaching. You know, so that's a, that's an easy thing to do. Uh, second row right, Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Hi, Austin. Hey, Kerry. Uh, what did you feel when you got that game ball on Saturday? You know, uh, undeserving uh, would be the first word that comes to my mind. We got a lot of kids who played their butts off and played in a great uh, environment, in a Big Ten game, and a lot of young kids that are starting to grow up and come of age. And so I, I would say that I felt undeserving. I was shocked. You know, Ryan was standing up there talking about it, and I thought, well, who, he's, who are you talking about? And then it was me, and then I was embarrassed, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, my wife asked me what I said to the kids afterward. I never remember uh, what I said, but, but I would think it would be some of the same things that I just said to you because they're what was in my heart. Uh, I love those kids, you know, and uh, you're gonna, gonna fight for them. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. Give you a chance to talk about something other than yourself. Then. Good, thank you. Denzel, yeah. How has this happened? I mean, it, we, we were talking to him after Rutgers. Like, I never had a big six because I didn't play defense. Right. How, where did this come from? Well, you know what? He's a he's a really he's a sharp kid, and I appreciate his humility in saying that. But but he is uh, having had the opportunity to be here from January and having great opportunity to play in the spring because guys were injured and dinged and getting getting work. And then I know I've told you guys this a million times, but lining up against our wide receivers day in and day out, you are going to sink or swim. You're either going to find out that you can play or you're going to find out that you can't. And when they find out, they, they are, those are like sharks to blood. When they find out that you think you can't, they're going after you in practice. And so he's got confidence. You know, he's, uh, he's a work in progress. He's got a long way to go. Uh, he's going to end up being a really, really good player here, you know. But so are a lot of guys. And, uh, and, and so he's been blessed to have the opportunity to play, play early, and to play well. And, uh, and, and I enjoy coaching him. Uh, third row, uh, uh, middle. Tony Gerdman, Buckeye School. Hi, Tony. Hi, Terry. Uh, Denzel, that demeanor kind of reminds me of Bradley Roby, which is very matter of fact. Do you see those, <coughs> some of those same similarities with just the yeah. approach and confidence? Yeah, I, I, I think. Many of the great ones out there, first of all, they have to have no conscience and they have to have no fear. Otherwise, they can't play fiercely. They can't be great. And so many of the great ones out there have that. You know, uh, Bradley would challenge me on many other fronts. Uh, Denzel doesn't yet, which is good news. Uh, but uh, he is a sponge, you know, and, and, and he retains what you tell him. You know, and, and, and again, you know, he made a critical error on Saturday. Uh, and, and, and hopefully that's one that he'll learn from and never make again. But he still has not seen everything. And that's part of this process, you know, is the opportunity to see everything. Uh, the more you play, the more you get that, you get that experience. And then as Brian this, the defense seems to be coming together. How do you balance now you want to add more versus let's not just do that yet? I think we have to continue to add and evolve uh, schematically, uh, because anything that you do all the time or over and over again gives the offense a great uh, advantage. 
And so I think that that is something that we're looking at every week. Certainly in the bye week, you want to study yourself and, and what have you done over the last six weeks and how now are teams going to try to attack us with playing more split safety defense. And so uh, th th we, we have to try to stay one step ahead. And, and, and I think that there'll be a continual evolution of learning um, and teaching uh, as we go forward over the next six weeks to the Big Ten. Right behind him, Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. Hi, Nathan. How are you doing? Um, Great, thanks. It seems like there's been, uh, obviously there has been an evolution at cover safety between the late and beginning of the start of the year and now Chad went on with Marcus and, and Cam. I guess, especially in, in, the, in the case of Cam, what has he shown you guys that has led to him having a bigger role? And just how do you see that splitting, I guess, going forward? Because it seems like Marcus has kind of, at least from the last game, jumped back into having a Yeah, I, what, what I would say, Nathan, is that our personnel is going to be a continual work in progress. And you will see evolution throughout many of the 11 posi positions on defense. And some of that is based in the in the youth that we have and the fact that some guys are better suited in some weeks to play in some structures than other guys. So you may see games where Marcus plays, the lion's share of plays, and then you may see games where somebody else does. And in, in specific reference to Cam Martinez, he was playing really well in man coverage, particularly against uh, throwing teams. And so that was a highlighted thing. And so based on who we're playing, I think the, the thing for us going forward is to continue to put the puzzle pieces in the right places for that week and for that game. And sometimes that can be challenging because guys need to flow and guys need, they, they need to play. And at the same time, there are guys who, whose skill set is going to match better with certain teams and certain schemes. How is that helping from a, a practice competition standpoint week to week? Something that seems like it probably wasn't there last year. No doubt. The, there's no question. I talked to the kids about this. Uh, last week, as a matter of fact, that the beauty of, of what we have right now is it's real competition. It's real practice. I mean, we literally went back on Friday and watched practice clips of a couple of kids trying to figure out who is it that may or may not start, how many reps, what, what's the rotation going to be like. And so we look at our ones versus ones clips. How do, they, how do they stand up and stack up against our number one offense and those opportunities they have in practice? because that's stuff they're going to see. And so the competition right now, uh, certainly in the back end, is, is, is good. And it's, it's making a difference in, first of all, you got to show up to practice every day. You've got to practice hard. Uh, somebody's chipping at your heels. And the good news is if you, if you didn't play as much last week, you can fix that next week, right? Go have a great week of practice and, and go fix it and go play. Now. It's a great question. Second row right, Tim May, let him interrupt. Uh, hi, Tim. How are you doing, Kerry? Great. Uh, as you look at the defense from the Oregon game to now, what, what has been the biggest difference you've seen in it? I mean, obviously you've had some young guys growing up right in front of right. your eyes. Scheme-wise, y'all made some tweaks, but what, what is it, the improvement you've seen most? Confidence, and I think the confidence has come from experience, first of all. You gotta, you gotta play the game to be able, you can say, I'm gonna be great, but until you do it, until you make plays, how do you know, right? Until you, and, and as much as you wanna get that in fall camp, and the opportunities we have to scrimmage against each other and all that, Saturday nights, uh, Thursday nights, Saturday afternoons are different deals, and especially with young players. And so hesitance breeds, you know, lack of success. And, and, and the ability to play with confidence and to play fast comes from having experience. Uh, and, and so I think that is the biggest marker going forward. I think our kids, you know, things that they were, that they didn't know or they were hesitant or, or whatever about themselves, uh, separate from the defense and all that, now they feel like, hey, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And, and as we continue to find out all the things they can do, I think that helps us with our evolution as well. Yeah, one other quick thing, your observation, Still, Chambers had been playing linebacker for a couple of years. Where would he be now? Yeah, he, but uh, he, or, uh, how impressed have you been by his rise? And I, I was really impressed Saturday because here's what Steele does. He sees and he goes. And you say, well, that, that, that seems really simple. It's not. It's not. Sometimes guys go and then they see. Sometimes they see and then they go. He sees and he goes. He sees, he's, not, he's not always right where he's going yet. 
right? Because he needs that experience. But when he sees it, he goes. And guys like that are fun to coach. And, and we've had a bunch of them here. And you guys, some of some people listed some comparisons. And he's 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 going to play more. We go back to the whole experience thing and the competition thing and how things will go at practice. He's got to have a great week of practice. But if he sees it and he goes and he keeps doing that, he's going to play a lot of ball for the Buckeyes. Right, right next door, uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Terry, um, Hi, Joey. When, you, when you talk about the, the defense having com more confidence, was there a point in the last few weeks that you started to, to notice that and you felt like they were becoming more confident? Like, when did you kind of start seeing it? Yeah, I would say probably the, the, the Rutgers game, you know, during the game, I felt like they really were – locked into and comfortable with what they were doing and running around and making plays. And, you know, there were a couple of, you know, in every game, regardless of what the final score is, in every game early, there are critical plays where guys have to make plays. And there were some in that game where, and you could just feel it. You could just see it. And sometimes you see it now from way up here that they're, they're, they're feeling good. They're feeling confident. They're feeling, so I thought that was the first place uh, where you could really see it on the, on the field. On the I, you know, I'm bad about that. I even remember what day it is. So I, I, I wish I could tell you, but you know, I thought we had a couple of good third down stops there, and, and, and I think our guys started to started to really feel it. Right next door, Bill Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Bill. Hi, Gary. Two things. Um, Thank you. There are about ten things I'd like to ask you. Let me ask you this first. Um, what is your role? What you know, what has changed from the time they made the, the change? In, what, what's your role? I think that it's, a, it's very hard to describe. It, it, you know, I think that we were working as a collaborative unit uh, prior to changing uh, who was going to have the final say on the call uh, on the sideline. So I think that in, in some ways those things are still true. I have tried to uh, change my role a little bit, first of all, because I'm, I'm in the box, second of all, because I'm spending some time on some other things relative to the game plan that I think are important. And so um, at the end of the day, there's an awful lot of conversation, obviously, during the week. And then by Saturday, there's still a good bit of conversation, you know, and we will sit together and talk about this place on the field and this personnel grouping and this call versus this down and distance situation so that by the time we are Saturday, it feels like everybody can make the call, if that makes sense. So I don't know if that really answers the question, but, you know, okay. um, the other thing is apparently that, not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, I don't expect you to kind of develop that in the future. Matt Barnes obviously has now gotten a promotion or whatever. But he's been very kind of deferential and careful to not mm -hmm. kind of say this is my defense. What ha how has he responded to this? What's your relationship with him like? And, and what do you think of him as a coach? Yeah, I think he's a very good coach. I, I think that relationships are and always should go uh, for all of us well beyond whatever our job descriptions, titles, and those things are. Otherwise, they're pretty fragile, right? They're not really relationships. They're those, you're just employees coming to work together every day. So I think that that's, that should be true for all of us. And so, you know, we, I think, uh, worked well together before. I think we work well together now. I think you probably have to ask him. But, uh, you know, I don't think that I, – I don't – to me, the, it's my responsibility to do a good job in all of these areas. It's my job I, I, to walk in the building with a bounce in my step to – uh, high five and hug every single kid I come across to prepare the team as best I can for it, as part of the team of coaches to help us win on Saturday. I mean, that's what my job is. And so I, you know, and I look forward to it every morning. I don't get out of bed and go, oh man, I got to go to work. I, I, it doesn't happen. You know, my, I, I tell, told you guys a million times, I get up on the edge of the bed and say, man, it's going to be a great day. Well, it still is. That, that doesn't change. And if you, if you let, if you let your circumstances change that, then I don't know that, that what, then you were kind of fake to begin with, or you weren't that, I don't know. So I don't know if that's a long answer again to 
relatively short question. Are you able to do that the first day after the change was made? Or oh, no. I'm not going to tell you that. I'll tell you the same thing I tell the kids when they, when they, when they have a tough day or an injury. or all. It's okay to be sad. It is. It's okay to be sad. And no, there's nothing wrong with that. Otherwise, if, 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 you're not, if it's not okay to be sad, if it's not okay to be upset, then what do we all, then, then is it okay to be happy, right? So, but, but that can't last. That's a 24-hour window. You know, and you, you got to pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you go back to work. You know, and, and, and that's what life is. That, that, that's true for all of us. So be sad for a day. I'm not going to tell you I was kicking my heels and jumping up for joy. I'm not. That would be a lie. I'd be disingenuous. Um, and, and, but, but I'm going to tell you that I make a conscious decision every day, and even that day, to make sure that I wasn't going to paint that picture for everybody else. You, you, your guts can be turning inside out and upside down. Uh, but but you don't have to show that to everybody else now, that, that, because that just makes to me that just asking for sympathy. Well, folks, we've got time for one more question far left here. Smalley, WCMH. Here, related to that. Yep. Um, you've been a very successful head coach yourself, and you yep. ran an excellent high school program. Thanks. You coached at all levels. Yep. And I'm wondering if there's an element of respect that you have for Ryan in that position. Do you know what that position mm -hmm. is like? Of having to make a significant decision early in a season because he's trying to do what you're saying, what's best for the team. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not the decision you're being very honest about. You don't, that's not what you were rooting for. But is there an element that you understand and you see the big picture of, of why the head coach has to do something of that nature? Yeah, I think that, here's what I think. And, and, and I, you, that's a tough question. To be honest with you, Gary. So I'd rather you not ask it, <laughs> because I, I, I have been, and, and and I think that the you know there are things about any any situation like that that uh, are are both good and bad and easy and hard and and uh, you know so I don't know I don't know exactly how to answer that best. Uh, I, I, do I have respect for Ryan Day? Absolutely. Do I have respect for the university? Absolutely. Do I have respect for how difficult uh, that process was? I, I do. I, I, I do. Uh, I, do I wish, do, do all of, do, I don't know, do I wish all, everything wasn't so public? Yeah, I do. You know, I think public's hard here. You know, I'll be honest with you, it's hard. And so that, that, that's, it's hard for your family. It's hard for these kids. It's, it's hard. You know that that part is, is really hard, and so what what I would say is that uh, you know our job, and I, and I can only control me and my response to things that happen uh, in the world. And once again, I want to tell you now, it, it's the hardest thing that's happened to me professionally, and if it's the hardest thing that ever happens to me professionally, that's a pretty daggone good career. You, you know, that, that, that's pretty good. So. Uh, but we can control how we respond to those tough and difficult situations. And, and Ryan responded in the way that Ryan believed was best for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And, and that is absolutely 100% the head coach's prerogative. And, and, and I've been in that job, and, and I know that. And so I, I, I understand it. And, and like you said, you don't, uh, you, you, when, when you're a part of a team, what, whether everything's going the way you want it to go or not, you're still part of that team. And, and so you, 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 we all got choices. We all got choices. You can quit, you know. That, that, that's certainly not a choice that, that, that I would aspire to. And it's the same thing, like I said, if it, if I've had a lot of kids that come in and knock on that door and that's what they're thinking, especially in the world of transfer portals and all those kind of things. And if you're gonna look a kid in the eye and say, hey man, you gotta hang in there. You're part of this team, you're part of this brotherhood. You need to fight, you need to scratch, you need to claw. Things are gonna get better. Things are gonna get better. You keep working, you keep struggling, you keep knocking on that door, it's gonna open someday. You're gonna be, then, then you can't do that and then turn around and, and walk out and say, well, it doesn't apply to me. That just makes you a liar. You know, it doesn't, I, I, I do want you to know, it doesn't shake my confidence in my ability to do the job. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't. I've been doing this a long time. I know I'm not, I'm not gonna walk out of here fearful of, of being able to do that job or any other. Uh, I, I, I won't because I believe in my heart with every fiber of my being, I'm able to do that job and any other. You know, present the job, let's go do it. Let's go do it. I'll take one, two, three, or four of you with me, let's go. I, I believe that. And so, and I always have. 
And, and so I think that helps, to be honest with you. I think that helps in, in tough situations.